we greet Sharon Kaskill. Thank you. Do I need that microphone? Yes, I do need the mic. Well, okay. So I have, do I have to hold it? No, I can. You can put it in. There. Let's see how this works. Is that good? A little. Because I fall out. Okay. It, I have to bend over. Is this good? If I talk like this now, no, I, or I have to hold it? All right, wait, wait, wait. Hold it. Let's try holding it. Is this good? Yeah. All right. I, I, this is no good, right? It's too loud. All right. Just like this. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. I'm Sharon Koskoff. And we have Ron Warren in the house doing a videotape tonight of our very special lecture here at Cascades. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, uh, we had planned this months ago, really. So the fact that it's actually here tonight is very, very exciting for me. It's my birthday week. So I just came from Henry's and had a lovely dinner. And uh, thank you to our uh, man here on the computer, too. Thank you so much. Mel, Mel Shearer. Mel Shearer. Thank you, Mel. Thank you. We couldn't do this without you. Anyway, I'm Sharon Koskoff. I'm a nice Jewish girl from Brooklyn. I'm living in Delray Beach 26 years this month, uh, actually December 1st. And uh, I love Art Deco. And we're going to learn tonight about Art Deco. And then hopefully, if you haven't thought about coming on the trip, it's this Friday, February 3rd, 10 o'clock, Lake Worth Playhouse. Be there or be square. Now, what is that Art Deco? What is this? What are you talking about? Who cares? Why, why are we doing this? You know, uh, and we'll be turning off the lights as we start showing the slides, but not quite yet. Is that okay? All right. So what is Art Deco and why are we talking about this? So maybe before we even talk about what is Art Deco, let's talk about what is Art Nouveau. Because you always hear about Art Nouveau and Art Deco in estate sales and things like that. So Art Nouveau was feminine and flowery, a celebration of nature. It was all things shells and feminine and fish and butterflies and organic and rich. And it was the voluptuous women and the vines growing in their hair. And we had that period from like the 1890s to the early 1920s. 1922, Howard Carter discovered King Tut's tomb. And all the rage became Egyptian. By 1925, we had the International Exposition des Arts Décoratives et Industriales Modernes in Paris. By 1968, someone looked back on Arts Décoratives, Arts Déco, and we call everything Art Déco from 1925 to 1939. That's a, a lot of things. It could be ceramics, architecture, jewelry, furniture, fashion, everything we call Art Deco. I prefer to call it the beginning of modernism. It's the beginning of modern life as we know it today. And if you think about why is that, it's because we have the machine age, the industrial revolution. They have all these machines and they don't know what to do with it. They know it's the future. So they have machines and the machines are copying everything that is handmade because before machines everything is handmade. Machines are doing a terrible job. Nobody wants to buy anything machine made. It's crass, it's cheap, it's ugly. They cannot reproduce, you know, old world craftsmanship. People want things from Europe, you know, handmade. But they know they got these machines, what are they going to do with them? So they find out the machine can do one thing that you cannot do by hand. Make a straight line. Wow, the straight line. So they go and copy and they look back into history all of the geometric art. A, uh, Asian, Aztec, Mayan, Japanese, Egyptian, anything that had a straight line, they copy all these designs, they recycle it, and they call it this modernism at this international exposition that we're now going to call Art Deco. And with that, lights please. Now, at age 14, I was a mural artist, and I am celebrating my 58th birthday, which means I'm painting murals 44 years. And I didn't know when I was 14 what was Art Deco. I just knew that I like painting murals. Let's see. And I started painting these geometric designs. 
in, the, in those days, it was called super graphics. But notice the straight line? This, we call this a step. See how it steps down? Well, this step is a ziggurat or a zigzag. And this is the whole basis for Art Deco. If you come to Lake Worth, you'll see that. And March 25th, we're running a bus trip to South Beach, which I just announced today. You're the first people to even hear of it. And if you come with us to South Beach, you'll see that as well. It's all about this stepping down zigzag lightning bolt. Let's see, is this going to work? OK. And here I am painting murals. I'm using masking tape. And I'm expanding, because here I'm using a one-inch masking tape. And then I discover two-inch masking tape and mirrors, because it was fun. Then I discovered, wow, the rounded corner. I can take the masking tape, and I can make a right angle, and then I can hand cut these curves. So I, in this case, it's a, a dark gray outline. So what I did was I painted the whole wall the dark gray, put on the masking tape, then I painted in between the tape, in between the lines, and when I pulled off the tape, the black line was revealed. Now, we're also going to see in architecture that this rounded corner is very important because it's streamlined, it's, it's aerodynamic. And Art Deco is everything masculine and speed and futuristic, everything about airplane and driving the cars and, and going fast. Oh, by the way, you saw the three windows, those, the, uh, that, everything in Art Deco was going to be in the threes. So we're going to see three circles, three portholes, three lines. Three is the magic number. And no one seems to know why, but it's probably because of the Egyptian pyramid. OK, here I'm still living in Brooklyn. And here now I'm, I'm making real circles, not just rounded corners. And this was for a Russian neighbor asked me to paint a mural, and they wanted it red. And you know, that seemed ridiculous to me. So I, I did earth tones, and I gave them just a little bit of red. OK, and here we're continuing in Staten Island, and I'm making a mural around this antique furniture, and I'm going in and out and under. And, but it's all about this geometric border, the, these, these What's on the left is on the right, very balanced. Art Deco is always mirror image. It's symmetrical. It's never asymmetrical. And here we're having fun. Here I learned to make one color touch another without the tape. It's like, wow. So I had to double tape it. I painted one side, and then I'd retape it. This was for, I remember his name, Sal Antosi. He was an Italian butcher in uh, Bay Ridge. OK. This was um, a mural. And uh, now I'm starting to put you know, something representational in. Now it's not just a geometric design, but I'm creating, uh, you know, we know that's a woman with a hat along with the geometric. And I'm going from one wall to the next wall because a mural is an environment, never just one wall or just a square. It goes from one wall to the next wall. And this looks a little empty without all the plants, but this is when I first got married and I painted a mural in my apartment, and I can't believe there's pictures in here. <laughs> I'm also a needlepoint designer. Anybody do needlepoint? I saw the DMC pearl cotton. And what is needlepoint? It's drawing on a grid. See all those little boxes and lines? It's actually a grid. And uh, you, I draw the design and someone you know, stitches it. They call it a half cross stitch. But when I got my first job, when I graduated Brooklyn College, I was going to be an art teacher. And there were no teaching jobs. And I, I was managing a needlepoint store on King's Highway. And I started to design needlepoint. And what happened was people would say, you know, do you have a dog, a French poodle? And I would say, uh, yes, we have this brown one. And you would come and say, well, my, my little poodle is white. So I'd say, well, gee, I'm an artist. Bring in a picture, and we'll draw your, your, your poodle, or in this case, Collie. And whenever I would draw something, I would always put this geometric design. I didn't even know it was Art Deco yet. But I kept doing these borders because a border is a good design. And it just made sense. You're on this grid, and it just fit so well. So I became known as the Art Deco lady, even in New York. And I started a line of needle points and my sister moved to Florida, and I come down, and it was 35 years, January 19th. I read it in the paper. The one day it snowed, I came down to Florida, and I painted this mural in Hollywood where she lived. And it was the day it snowed, which went down in history in Florida, if you, any of you were here. And um, from the story goes that 
When she moved out, because she didn't make it here in Florida, they charged her $1,000 to repaint the building, you know, the apartment. But her neighbors that were still there, when it got rented, the neighbors told my sister, they charged the neighbors, the new renter people, a thousand to keep it. So they made money both ways. <laughs> Here we are with purples. And tomorrow I'll be giving a color theory workshop to women in the visual arts uh, in Boca. A full day uh, workshop, hands on. And we're going to be talking about color theory. And the color purple will certainly be in that. Because notice you have the blue purples and the red purples. and. Uh, very, very exciting. But we'll always see what's on the left is on the right and, and the, step, the stepping down as we're going to see in the architecture. Okay, I get my own apartment. The gazelle, the whippet, the jaguar, all the animals in Art Deco are about speed because Art Deco is fast. So my favorite color is green. What do I paint? A green gazelle in my bedroom. And more geometry. I get my own apartment. Here we go. This, the, you saw the bedroom. This was the living room. Now, I was Miss New York. And if you see here, we have the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building. And way down there are the World Trade Centers. Because when you lived in New York, they were never really considered you know, the most fabulous architecture ever built. They were really two kind of towers. Um, but they were part of my skyline. I was so New York. I was never going to move to Florida. I belong to the Art Deco Society in New York. And here we see a very famous picture of the Chrysler Building. Now remember, everything is threes. One, two, three. And the eagle, of course, is a fast animal, which we know. And overlooking the Empire State Building. So here I am. I'm in this program. I designed this for the Art Deco Society, June 84. And I wind up moving to Florida December 85. My apartment was burglarized, and I never wanted to look back. And I came to Delray. This is the last painting I made in New York. And this was from a play on the 20th century with Imogene Coco in Broadway. And it was from the Playbill. And uh, because I was doing needlepoint, See how the fur is three-dimensional? Because if this was a needlepoint, I would teach you a turkey stitch. You go, oh, let's make the fur stand out. Oh, let's put a diamond in the earring. You know, it's all about design and fun. And I would take that needlepoint stuff and kind of put it in my murals and my designs. Mom moves to Florida, right? We all, the whole family moves to Florida. So now she always liked that, that train mural that we saw earlier, that gray one. So she wanted the same thing, but Everything in Florida was peach and green, right? This is the 80s, so there's mom's house. And now finally people say to me, well, you're into Art Deco. You have to meet Barbara Bayer Capitman. She's in Miami. She's the queen of Art Deco. And there she is uh, with a book that she wrote. Uh, before she even wrote the book, there was a, the only Art Deco book was this little pink book called Tropical Deco. You could see it you know, in all the libraries and things. And Barbara said to me, Sharon Koskoff, you have to start the Art Deco Society of the Palm Beaches. And I said, what, are you kidding me? I said, I'm an artist. I don't know about nonprofit agencies, organizations, 501c3s. I don't know, you know. And she mentored me. She taught me everything. And the rest was history. And there I am with a perm. <laughs> so I continued painting murals here in schools, as you heard. And I invented the Jazz Man. The Jazz Man became our logo. I'm wearing it on my gold chain on my neck. Uh, it's on t-shirts. It's in the book, which I wrote, Art Deco of the Palm Beaches, which we'll be looking at shortly. But the Jazz Man, it's kind of a Fred Astaire dancing man, and it just kind of epitomizes everything Art Deco. Masculine, geometric, exciting, energy, the jazz age, all that, that good stuff. Here's a, a mural I painted. Someone wanted their house to look like a diner. Now, glass block. Yes, gla we added the glass block. Glass block is Art Deco. And these stripes, we call these bandings. So here they're vertical or horizontal, but we're going to see a lot of bandings coming up. And neon. Did you see that last picture? Uh, let's see. Last viewed. Let's, you could do that. Oop. Try it again. 
Neon, Mike's Diner. Neon is invented because people are driving around in their cars in the 30s and 40s, right? And they need to know where do they buy gas or eat at Joe's. So neon is invented because people are now going out at night and they're driving in the dark. Okay, bathrooms is a typical stylized woman. Stylized means to elongate or simplify. So Art Deco is stylized. Art Nouveau was the voluptuous woman, the, the jazz age woman, the, the flapper, she's flat chested, she cuts her hair, the bob. All right, so what's going on in the society? Women are now empowered, women get the vote. Okay, it's hard to believe, but women didn't get to vote till the 1920s. Uh, so the women are really becoming emancipated. And this is actually an Art Deco lamp that I painted. And the skinny Erte women. Now, if you like Erte, this Wednesday, February 1st, at the Armory Art Center, we have our lecture series. Scott Tim is flying in from uh, Pittsburgh, and he will be talking about the art in Art Deco, like Tamara de Lampica is a famous female artist, Erte, and that sort of jazz. And here's from Radio City Music Hall, I designed a home theater. So my murals are becoming less about geometry and lines and more about representational things. And this picture is, is directly from Radio City, and we, again, we have the deer and the gazelle, but the sun, because in Florida, we worship the sun. In the 1920s, it became acceptable to get a tan. You know, Coco Chanel was on a boat, she got a tan, and it became rage. Before the sun, Right? Only the, the slaves or people who pick cotton had a tan. Now, well, now we know the sun isn't so good for us. But, you know, people, you know, want that tan. And it all started in the Art Deco era, the sun and Florida. Here's a Coney Island mural I designed. More Coney Island. And this is all in Admiral's Cove, Jupiter. So the first one was Art Deco, and then his neighbor wanted the Coney Island, and the one across the street wanted this Baroque theater. And all three of these houses were next door to Celine Dion. So the joke was, when are you going to design a theater for Celine Dion? And a 60s kind of design here. We had the lima bean and the amorphic shape of the 60s. And there I am on the ladder. My nephew, I'm all about the colors. The Love's Drug Mural is now the Arts Garage. Anybody here of the Arts Garage? It's all getting all the publicity in Delray. They built the parking garage. They tore down our mural. And here we have some more stuff. But let's get to some architecture, OK? This is the Armory Art Center in West Palm Beach, where the Wednesday lecture series will be held. And our bus trip on Sunday, March 25th, picks up in West Palm at the Armory, as well as the Delray Beach Library right here on West Atlantic Avenue. And the Armory Art Center, although this isn't a great slide, we can see the stepping down. And it's peach and green because I painted it that way. <laughs> in Delray, we have the Boyd Building on the Intracoastal, where the restaurant, um, what's the name of the restaurant? De uh, Deck 84 is now located. And that's an Art Deco building, and it looks like a ship. The second floor is smaller than the first. See the banding that we talked about? Fluted ribbing, these columns are Art Deco, and there's something called eyebrows, well there it is, it's hidden by the awning. But we're going to see more about eyebrows. Eyebrows are flat linear planes, or shelves, like a shelf, and it's over a window, like sunglasses to protect from the sun. Here's a building in uh, the A1A side of Delray, on Casuarina, flat roof. Art Deco must have a flat roof. No triangle roof, okay, no, not Mediterranean re Revival or Spanish. The flat roof. Now this is the eyebrow, this green pane, and we're going to see this many different ways. And this, of course, is a staircase. Well, we gave an Art Deco walking tour in Del Rey, and some people there lived in this building and said, can you redesign the colors? And the new color is yellow. Everything, if you've, if you've noticed, is yellow in architecture. It's either yellow, yellow-green, orange, which is like a terracotta, or even in the earth tones, we're in the browns. Just a few years ago, everything was peach and blue-green. That's old now. Any building that's peach and blue-green needs a paint job. 
Everything now is yellow. And that's because we're very anti-war now. We're into peace. We want peace and love. And if you remember the 70s, when we were peace and love, everything was brown and earth tones. We return back to nature and the earth when we are peaceful. When we're aggressive and we want to you know, kill and drop the bomb, then we're with black and silver and gray and, and, and you know, pink and all these kind of aggressive colors. But earth tones is for peace time. Here's a house on Singer Island. Now this is not Art Deco, but these are the cool colors, the light blue and the blue sky. And we added a few little elements here and we brought it up into the year 2000s, you might say, just by adding a little yellow and a little blue and green trim. Well, a few years ago, a school called me up and this is called Forest this is on Forest Hill and Kirk. This is Palm Springs Middle School. And I painted many, many murals in there, maybe 50 murals in there. Stairwells, the media center, the admin lobby, the cafeteria, the entire school. Well, the architects who built this, Schenkel and Schultz, they built this building in the Art Deco style. Now let's see. See how it steps up three times? There's those stripes we talked about, the bandings. Here's more bandings in, in the concrete. Uh, well, kind of on the left is kind of on the right. I mean, I think they took some liberties, but they found that it was very reasonable to, to build a building in the Art Deco style. Well, anyway, I wrote my book, Art Deco of the Palm Beaches, and it got all over the newspaper, and I get an email. Oh, where's Schenkel and Schultz? You know, do you know we built an Art Deco school? <laughs> and I said, uh, duh. You know, I painted 50 murals in this school, and they were so embarrassed. <laughs> And here's some of the mural work you could see. Now they had the earth tones plus blue. So here's all the, the yellows and the terracottas. Here's the circles and you know little stripe. You can see how these Art Deco designs look so lovely and sharp and crisp. This is the media center, one of my favorite rooms. But let's look at even the furniture, the rounded corner and the bandings, the stripes. And of course it's one, two, three. And here what's on the left is on the right and you can see why there's blue in the mural because it was blue in the floor as well as the other colors. Cafeteria, sometimes we have to work on concrete block. Uh, painting murals is not easy, it is extremely physical. The logo was the Stingray. So they wanted a New York skyline kind of, you know, New York eatery, but we threw the fish in because that was their logo. Now we're in Delray and it's the 1940s, and this is Ruth and Ray Wenger. And they were wild. Look at that. He has the motorcycle with the sidecar, right? He, he had a good time. And he built this house, this Art Deco house, with the one, two, three circles. All right, see the geometric walkway. It's on Wall Street. It's, this is right near that new Walmart they built off Federal. It's between Federal and a street called Old Dixie, actually. It's 3811 Wall Street. And the building has those eyebrows, but they didn't just put the eyebrows over the windows. They made like a birthday cake with them. And there is, of course, portholes, one, two, three. And this is what it looks like today. I just redesigned the colors this week. And of course, we brought in the terracottas and the yellow greens, and we cut it with blue for the nautical feel. And this is what it looks like. Fun house, fun, fun house. This is the home of Linda Stabile and uh, she's a member of the Art Deco Society. And here's the book, Images of America by Arcadia Publications, Art Deco of the Palm Beaches. And when we picked this cover, you know, it didn't really look that Art Deco to me. I was hoping to get one of the, you know, buildings like the Armory Art Center on the cover. But they picked this building of, um, in Del Rey because it had people on it. It seems that people sell books. So when you write a book, you learn a lot of things. So for, you know, I wasn't that happy, but then I said, well, you know, let's look at this. Here's the woman on the chaise, and then the shadow, and then there's my name. So it kind of steps up, so I like that. And then because it was from Delray, my hometown, the Delray Beach Historical Society was happy with that. So it was kind of win-win. This is what the Armory Art Center looks like today. Uh, and you can see the colors. They have a blue roof on the sculpture building, so I think they copied that and put the blue here. 
uh, but we see the fluted ribbings very clearly, the stepping down. Now here's something new, stepping back. See how this is in front of this, and this isn't, it goes back and back. So things can step down and they could step back, makes it Art Deco. And of course there's your eyebrow. Now the first chapter in my book, I happen to be an artist, so the first chapter is called Arts Buildings, because it turns out our most important arts institutions in Palm Beach County are located in Art Deco buildings as the Armory Art Center. Here's an original photo from 1939. It actually was a National Guard Armory during World War II. And here's some kids learning all about Art Deco architecture. This is a high school and we had them design their own buildings and we made a big collage. This is the Twin Lakes High School building, now known as the Alex Dreyfus School of Arts. The very prestigious School of Arts is Art Deco. Now, there's 13 buildings on this campus. This is by Macy's and the Cheesecake Factory and City Place. They're all Mediterranean Revival, but this one building was Art Deco. We had to go to the school board in the 90s and fight and say we have to save this building because the School of the Arts kids need to know about history and their culture. South Florida, the earliest buildings we have are from the 30s and 40s. Go to Europe, buildings are 600 years old. Go to New York, buildings are 300 years old. Our earliest architectural history is the 30s and 40s, and they did not even keep records in those days. Half of these buildings, we don't even know the architect. In this case, the Armory Art Center is William Manley King, as well as this building, William Manley King. And we can see here what makes this building Art Deco. One, two, three, the stepping down, the columns. Here we have the rounded corners. And here we have the, the bands, the stripes. Uh, this is also the campus. You can see how all the other buildings are the Spanish Mediterranean Revival style with the barrel roof. Uh, but this happens to be a little archway and it's interesting because they somehow knew the future. Here's a man with a paintbrush and a woman with a violin. So somehow they knew it would become a school of the arts. This is right outside the City Place parking lot. Norton Museum, have you all been to the Norton Museum? Yes. Great. For years they kept wanting to say it's an international style building, but it's Art Deco. You have the flat roof, you have the, the left and the right, you have these Paul Manship sculptures of uh, you know, the fast animals and, and, and the speed. Paul Manship is the artist that we see on the, the Today Show on NBC at nine o'clock in the morning. They show the Prometheus Fountain at Rockefeller Center. Very, very famous. Paul Manship is the uh, sculptor. And I, I know the slide is missing, but the story goes that Diana and Acteon, Diana was the goddess of hunting. And she was in the, the, the forest bathing and, and she was nude. And her boyfriend, Acteon, comes upon her. So naturally she had to kill him because he saw her in nude. So she took her, her bow and arrow and she struck him and the arrow turns him into a wolf. And his own hounds maul him to death. So. Uh, Paul Manship shows him just when he's turning into the wolf, you can see the ears, it is transformation. Uh, the interesting thing is that originally these sculptures were hung opposite and just up until about four years ago they, they put them back to the story. There's the Prometheus fountain that we see at Rockefeller Center. So we here have two Paul Manship sculptures on Olive Avenue at the Norton entrance. When I wrote the book, what I didn't know was the three reliefs, imagination, inspiration, and interpretation, that those reliefs also on the building were by Paul Manship. And it's a very Art Deco thing to uh, put what we call a relief on a building to represent what is going on inside the building, in this case, a museum. Uh, now this didn't make it in the book, who knew, right? Uh, in the um, courtyard of the Norton, we have this William Wheeler sculpture that's Art Deco, and here we see the one, two, three, the fluted ribbing, one, two, three, the octagonal, you know, the geometric, uh, in this stylized female sculpture by William Wheeler. 
This is my favorite building. I was just in the newspaper uh, front page uh, with a feature of the Palm Beach Post and it asked me my favorite building. And it was the old Lake Theater, which we will see on our walking tour in Lake Worth on February 3rd. This has just opened this week. The Palm Beach County Cultural Council moved in there and we just had a big party Monday to the grand opening. So we will be able to get into this building. They have a lovely little art exhibit, even though it's really just the offices of the Cultural Council. Now, what, what's so great about this building? We have the little stepping up. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the threes, a little stepping back, the rounded corners, the fluted ribbing. This glass entrance is new, um, but uh, fabulous building in Lake Worth. And I love it white. It doesn't need to be colorful. Actually, all the Art Deco buildings in the 30s and 40s were originally white. Like when we talk about Miami, all those buildings, they were originally white. Maybe the eyebrow had a blue or green to reflect the ocean. Barbara Capitman, the queen of Art Deco, and Leonard Horowitz, who was an industrial designer, he started painting up all the buildings, what they called the pastel paradise, the pink and the blue and the green and the purple, you know, where they said, oh, they were shocked, you know, when they saw the colors of these buildings. But this building is lovely in the pure white. And what's really nice is sometimes they just have a color, lights illuminating it. And that's really very nice. Now, if you come with us Sunday, March 25th, to down to Miami, most of the buildings turned white again. It's lost most of its color and fun. But not because of any reason other than the buildings faded. And when they got to repaint them, the owners of the buildings you know, would have to get approvals and sketches and, 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 and go through a long process to repaint the building. And we know they'd have to repaint them yellow, right? Because, you know, the pinks and purples aren't in fashion anymore. So rather than go through all the approvals, they just paint them white. They don't need permission. And then they have a fresh coat of paint. So it's sad because when you go to Miami, it's lost all its fun. Here's an art photo of the building. It's like pointing to the heavens. It's beautiful. And this, I won an award. I, I took a photograph. Nobody even knew what building it was. This was uh, hanging in Palm Beach International Airport with Art and Public Places, Palm Beach County. I just took one shot of, of that vertical banding. This is the inside lobby. When you enter, this is a Tom Otterness sculpture. And uh, it's kind of uh, fun, X-rated. And this is what it looks like right now. This is the remodeling. If you've been inside there before, look how it's changed. They built a second floor. It's all office spaces. They put it in this glass block. This used to be one big open, you know, museum. And before that, of course, a theater, movie theater. But now they built a second floor. And uh, I, I threw that slide in as a surprise. In front of that building, I painted a fire hydrant two years ago. For Veterans Day, uh, they lost their money for the parade in Lake Worth, and they asked some artists to paint on a fire hydrant in oil-based paint, which is very hard to work with. It took me four days to paint that uh, hydrant. In fact, it needs a little restoration now. Do the dogs but have the nerve? yes, the dogs the dogs love it. <laughs> but uh, this is, was a female merchant marine, and there are eight fire hydrants, you know, representing the eight, you know, the armed forces, the army, the navy, and I picked a female merchant marine. And uh, the back uh, is the front and back. It's cute. That's cute. And there, of course, we have street painting, which I do every year. And I'm always in front of the building, although I won't be there this year. But it's right in front of my favorite building and favorite fire hydrant. But if you notice here the theme, we did save the casino of Lake Worth. And we're going to be talking about this. This is uh, a building that was on the beach where Johnny G's restaurant was. And after a lot of controversy and charrettes and things, the building was built in 1922 by G. Sherman Childs. And it was a very ornate Mediterranean revival, like a castle. It was a lovely building. G. Sherman Childs is a very important architect. A hurricane came, tore it down, and in 1949, it was rebuilt by Edgar S. Wartman in this very modern style. Now, Streamline Modern, this modern style, is actually the absence of man's idiosyncratic embellishments. So it's like the opposite of design. 
and it's rather boxy. So at these meetings, they would say to people, well, do you want, we're going to rebuild this building. You know, do you want this gorgeous castle or do you want the box? So, you know, everybody said they wanted the gorgeous castle. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but that is not historic preservation. That's rebuilding a new building that looks like a 1922 building. So people have to understand historic preservation is, is actually preserving history, not recreating or fabricating history. Okay? So well, actually when I did this, um, and I applied next year for street painting, I did it every year for 16 years, conveniently I didn't, I was rejected. But they also called me and said I was a bad girl. I knew I wasn't supposed to do this. You know, this was a little too controversial for them, and I, I made a mistake. But I brought my old school square kids, and uh, it's still, it's all about the color. And I did another fire hydrant in Parrot Cove. So we put the parrots for Parrot Cove. So really, I was just really being very pro Lake Worth. OK, anybody know this building? Anybody ever see this picture before? This is the old Lake Worth Playhouse. This is the oldest building on our Art Deco registry. And we call this Moorish Deco, because we're still talking about arts buildings in Palm Beach County. And here we see the one, two, three. And you know, one, two, three windows here. And here's the striping. It's a little more ornate. It has a Spanish influence. So this is a Moorish Deco. And uh, there's the marquee with the one, two, three little columns. And this is kind of what it looks like today, more streamlined. And they asked me to rebuild the marquee. But here you have Art Deco lettering. The thick and the thin is Art Deco. Uh, of course, the awning is not. That's just an add-on. But there's your bandings and your, your, your fluted ribbing and your flat roof. And this is what it looks like today. Of course, it's yellow. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to make the opposite of yellow was purple. So we kind of went with this light lavender, kind of bluish purple. And we put an Art Deco marquee. But I made a triangular marquee. Now, this is a one-way street heading uh, east towards Palm Beach. And by making a triangle roof, wow, I mean a marquee, you could really read it and see it. Before, when it was a box and you were driving, you couldn't read it at all. And here it is at night. It is truly, I am very proud of this. Because when I said to them, we're going to get a, a neon marquee, they said, oh, you can't do that. And I said, oh, yeah, we're doing that. <laughs> it's a theater. Come on, right? OK. So this is, where we will, this is where we will be meeting Friday morning, February 3rd, Lake Worth Playhouse. Inside, you will see the ceiling. This is the original ceiling, the Pecky Cypress. An O and a T, although it looks upside down here. O and T, it was originally the Oakley Theater, the Oakley Brothers. And there's a ghost living in the theater. So when you come, we're going to walk through the theater, and maybe the ghost will be there. <laughs> uh, the Quillo Theater, the thick and thin lettering we talked about. Now, this is called Decometric. This is a new theater design. So I coined the word in 1980, Decometric. Because it's not historic Art Deco, you could call it Art Deco, but that means it was built in the 30s or 40s. So when we say Deco metric, it means like kind of new Deco. This is um, the Tim Eaton Gallery on Quadrille, also across the street from City Place. This is an Art Deco building. And we have the fast animals in front of the Society of the Four Arts, the Jaguar. Also by William Wheeler, the artist who did the female at the Norton. This is Belford Shoemate, one of our most important Art Deco architects. And he's part Shawnee American Indian. And he lived in Phipps Plaza in Palm Beach. And this is one of his buildings at 1221 North Lake Way, Palm Beach. And look how it looks like a ship, right? I mean, just like a ship. And you see little stylized waves. Of course, the one, two, three circles. One, two, three circles. This is facing the pool and the intracoastal. This is inside the house with Art Deco furniture, the original floors, parquet floor. Terrazzo floor is Art Deco. If you go into the old houses, the terrazzo floor, huge Art Deco element. And of course, we see a large porthole 
because everything in Florida is nautical deco to remind us of the ship. Now, the man who owned this house was Kirby Kalouris. And you might have uh, seen a television show about him called Seasons. He was the male escort to the older women, you know, the, the gay escort who took all the women to the ball. Uh, he was uh, written up in a book, uh, you know, with these, you know, gossipy tell-all kind of books in Palm Beach. And he was a good friend of mine, and we had many parties in this house. Now, he sold that house for, I don't know, a lot of millions of dollars. And he took the money, and he bought this new house, and I just went to visit him. He's been living up in Stewart for 10 years. The vice president of Art Deco, they live up in Stewart, and I go there all the time. And just this summer, I said, yeah, I got to go find Kirby. I bet he's right over here. And he had a magnificent house. And there's Kirby in his new house in, in, in Stewart. And his mother was an Isadora Duncan dancer from the Art Deco era, where they had all of this you know, avant-garde ballet movement with the flowing, you know, the, the uh, flowing fabric and just beautiful. His uncle, Nathan Dolinsky, uh, was a very famous artist in 1925. And the house has hundreds of these muralesque size paintings. And you are the first people, I, I just pulled some of these out because I always update my show, and I wanted to share these with you. This is winter, spring, summer, fall, the seasons. And, and you can just see, they all look like Isadora Duncan dancers and the cool colors and the, the casual lifestyle and uh, the fluid women, just beautiful. The peacocks, these are kind of in the Art Nouveau era, right? Because we said Art Nouveau was the peacock and then the bird and the butterfly. So, you know, in the 20s, you had the Art Nouveau influence and the Art Deco. If we really want to talk about what was going on in the fine art world in the 1920s, well, pardon me? Mucha, yeah, Mucha, Alphonse Mucha, he was Art Nouveau. But in the 1920s, you have Cubism and Picasso. And what was Cubism? The straight line. You have Mondrian with the grids and the tic-tac-toe, the straight line. So wherever we look, you know, modernism and the straight line was what was going on. Uh, but again, these are very Art Nouveau and very feminine, obviously. But I just wanted to show these beautiful, he has hundreds, the house is a museum. We could do a whole slideshow on Kirby's house. Now, this is, we're still doing Belfort Shoemate. This is 140 Monroe Drive in West Palm. This house is very nautical. Uh, we have the rounded uh, corners, you know, that looks like a ship. And this banding here is yellow and navy, like a ship would be the primary colors. And we call this vitrolite. It was very common in commercial buildings. It gave a little striping and a little flare. Look at the back of this house. To get upstairs, it's actually like a ship. You know, you don't walk down these steps. You face forward and you, you hold down one step at a time. But it's even in the back, the rounded corners of the railing, the ship railing. Uh, Belfort Shoemate was a great designer. Another Belfort Shoemate mansion, 2631 Flagler Drive. And you see the porthole windows. Now this building doesn't have quite a flat roof. This was the Wagner residence. And we see the elements of the one, two, three, and the stylized water, and the fountain, and the porthole windows. But let's see what we're going to see here. OK, the stylized metal entrance and the relief. Remember, we saw relief at the Norton. Here's stylized water and rounded corners and stepping back and one, two, three steps up. The people who own the building now are the Marshmans. So they took the W and flipped it up and they have the original gate. The W became the M. They also built a gate for the garage with, with the same uh, metal work. Now metal work, if you like that, Edgar Brandt, who is the most famous Art Deco metal smith, the author, Joan Carr, is giving our last Art Deco series the first Wednesday in March at the Armory, March 7th. And I'll be giving out those postcards. So if you want to learn about metal, come to see that lecture. And this is inside the house, one of these grand Art Deco kind of stairwells. And look at the, the, the squiggle, the one, two, three in the squiggle. That kind of represents the wave, the ocean, the water. 
And look at the bathroom with the pink and black tile. Belfort Shoemate did the greatest bathroom tiles. Look at the alcove in the kitchen, the, the little tears, the little rounded eyebrow architecture. Now, the Marshmans actually have Art Deco furniture in their home, which is unusual. If you go to South Beach, you know, people are renting an Art Deco building. It doesn't mean they have Art Deco furniture, you know, right? We all have furniture that we like. It doesn't mean that you have to be an Art Deco collector to live in an Art Deco house, but they do actually have Art Deco. And here's the full cover of my book. Here's the Palm Beach Post when the book came out, all the press, oh, it got rave reviews. And here we see the Lake Worth Playhouse with the old marquee, right, because this is three years ago. Here we see an entrance with a one, two, three. This is the Adventist Church. Here's the, my favorite building, right, the Palm Beach County, County Cultural Council building. And we know this building, the William Manley King uh, at the Dreyfus School of Arts. Here's a building up in Stewart, a dentist office. And we know what's on the left is on the right. Look at this rounded eyebrow here. It looks like a face, right? It looks like eyes and a real eyebrow. Corner eyebrows. Now, Art Deco, they could put windows in corners because now they have reinforced concrete. So they can build structural buildings differently now. They could put glass, a window. It just doesn't have to be a support wall. And this uh, was the Canal Point Elementary School, which was recently torn down due to a fire. And we just saw Linda's house. This was what her, her house was yellow and red and green and blue before I just repainted it in the white and the terracotta. And of course, we saw this house as well, freshly painted yellow. I, I made a map. I'm gonna go back to last viewed. I made a map in the book to show everybody where Art Deco was in the county. And here we are on a walking tour. And I'll be taking a picture of you on Friday. <laughs> and then you'll be in a presentation. Uh, here we have Amy and, and some friends uh, all walking. This is in the Northwood uh, walking tour. We call this Art Deco on Broadway. But let's see. We have the glass block back there. And we're in front of an old post office. Now, this post office is one of the three that they're going to close in Palm Beach County. Really, this just needs a little painting and fixing up. But let's look. One, two, three doors, fluted ribbing, the eyebrow, the little zigzag, the little, right, the little lightning bolt step down. I mean, you know, library, uh, libraries, post offices are very important to a downtown. It's where the, you know, people used to meet, used to be like a community-oriented place. And now, you know, due to the internet and the speed of Art Deco and the, you know, all this fast society we're living in, they're going to close down all our post offices. Here we are at a walking tour in Del Rey, and an optional buyer lunch here was at the Sunday House. So that was a group of interior designers. And here we are in Lake Worth, which this is, uh, we did this on the Veterans Day in honor of the fire hydrants. So here we are, here's the group. It was a gorgeous day. It was November 11th, and here are some of the buildings. And here we have refreshments at the Clay Glass Stone Gallery where we serve, uh, you know, fruit and juice and water. We stop for refreshments and a, a pit stop. And here we are. Rena Menar Blades, the executive director of the Cultural Council, let us just come into the little lobby because the building was not open to the public till this week. And then while we were walking down a building I haven't been in for 25 years, we knocked on the door, someone let us in, and we got to see the inside of a, an apartment building with the blue glass and a fluted ribbing on the fire uh, fire place. Thank you. And you also see some etched glass. Etched glass is also an Art Deco element, decorative element. And of course the Art Deco Publix. They built this building because of me. Thank you very much. Seriously. Suzanne Mulvihill, Lake Worth Commissioner, when they were passing the approval to build a downtown Publix, they showed them the plans and Suzanne said, why are you showing me a Mediterranean Revival building? Sharon Koskoff in her book clearly says, Lake Worth is the largest capital of Art Deco architecture in the county. Why don't we get an Art Deco Publix? And they went, we can do that, we can do that. And they came back and they said, yeah, retro Publix. 
So we'll, we'll go check that out. Here are some buildings, pictures of it while it was, uh, you know, in progress. Fun stuff. Jet Setter has now closed. It's now called Mora. I have not been in there, but this used to be the old Christine's. And let's look at the big rounded entrance of the futuristic, you know, uh, rocket ship like uh, Buck Rogers. And uh, the glass block and the stepping up, the stepping down, the fluted ribbing. And Christine's was a catering hall. And I think it's catering now. I really have to check it out. It just recently reopened, and I haven't connected with them yet. But Mike Jones ran this building called Jet Setters, and I'm sure he lost a lot, a lot of money on this investment. It was a great, great place. It was all 60s on the inside, like the Jetsons and the Polynesian restaurants. And he is now running parties out of Fort Lauderdale. It's called the Mai Kai. Everybody knew about it but me. It's an old Polynesian restaurant with, with a, a, a dance show and the hula girls. It's, it's really fun. So there's a whole group of people into that spy music, surfer music, sunglasses, you know, kind of fun thing. The 60s are a fun era. And this is also in Lake Worth with the blue glass and the flat eyebrow and the flat roof and the glass block. And you know, I always say what's on the left is on the right. Well, this house has a twin directly opposite it. So uh, it's a, a great house. Okay, well, here I'm announcing today the South Beach bus trip, Sunday, March 25th. Every year it's sold out if you'd like to come. And this movie will, uh, this building, the Carlisle, was from the movie La Caja Fall with Robin Williams, that fun movie, the remake of uh, The Birdcage, or the vice versa. <laughs> so this is what Art Deco looks net like now. Now look at it, it's all white. All the colors from the pastel days from the 80s are gone. And you, you know, when you're walking here, you don't even see the architecture. You're like under the awning, and they usher you in and usher you out. And I don't know, Miami, um, it has changed its whole feel. It was all about the architecture, and now they're, they're kind of booming, but they're, they're changing. Things are changing. But let's see, we have the rounded eyebrows, and little stepping up and stepping down, and fun things. Here's the Cavalier. And again, you can see people are eating here, but they, the awnings are to the street. So you can't even look up at the architecture. You have to be across the street on the ocean to even see what's going on in the building. But if we do look at the building, it's all white and the same colors I painted Linda's house. You'll see a little bit of yellow and you know little Egyptian colors, the blue green and the terracotta, you know the King Tut colors. Okay, and a lot of Miami you'll also see is under construction now, where they're remodeling and you know redoing. Inside they remodel these buildings; they're just beautiful, uh, and they're small, they're quaint. We've had lunch at the Wish Restaurant, which uh, the new colors now are you know the lime green and the blue green. Todd Oldham, the fashion designer, did the interior where we we had uh, lunch. This year we'll be having lunch at Smith and Walensky's. And in the morning, what we do is we walk along Lincoln Road. That's the new hot spot, all the Art Deco architecture. The, it's a pedestrian mall, and they have an antique show, an art show, and it's so much fun. You know, you don't have to buy anything, but it's just fun to see people with their dogs. And uh, Morris Lapidus, who built that Lincoln Road mall, if we look here on my birthday, January 24, 1999, I went to the Fountain Blue for a lecture of Morris Lapidus. And I wrote all these notes of everything he talked about, and then I went up at the end and I got his signature. And he died at age 98. Now when he built the Fountain Blue, that was 1954, the year I was born, and he got horrible reviews. Architecturally, you know, they, they, they said he was terrible, he was gaudy, he was obnoxious. It wasn't until he was like 98 that they gave him big awards for that building. But they just underwent a billion dollar restoration. Not a million dollar, a billion dollar restoration. And we took bus trips there two times and we walked along and it is something to see. They have like 13 pools and spas and restaurants and but I have Morris's address and this is what it looks like today. You know all neon and just glorious. Last year I picked the day for the bus trip, February 6th. 
I did not know it was the Super Bowl. <laughs> so that was funny. So we, 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 we um, but everybody came because you know we get home about six thirty. So it was it wasn't the worst thing, but it was a funny thing. Well, turns out that week, what do I find out? Frank Geary, the architect who did the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, who did the Kodak Building in Hollywood. Frank Geary, the famous architect, built the New World Symphony on Lincoln Road. What day did it open? Sunday, February 6th. Sharon Koskoff calls up. I know this is impossible because, you know, I, you probably run tours on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5 or, you know, 3. But could we get a tour at 11 o'clock Sunday morning, February 6th? Okay. So we had the first tour ever. And we didn't even announce it. It was a surprise on the bus trip. So some people actually wanted to stay on Lincoln Road. So we had like an option. You could, you know, stay Lincoln Road, meet us, we'll pick you back up. And the other people got back on the bus and we went to Frank Gehry and we came back and someone asked somebody a question and then he said, to be honest, I don't know the answer because today's the first day <laughs> that the building was open. So this is big stuff, New World Symphony Lincoln Road. And this is what the inside of the building looks like. Now this is not Art Deco. This is, you know, wildly ge geometric and crazy. Now the reason the inside looks like this is if you've ever seen a Frank Gehry building, um, you know, he has all these crazy geometric shapes extending the building. Well, the hurricane codes in Florida will not allow that. So instead of extending, he imploded his geometric shapes. So when you're standing here, you know, that's just a, a stairwell and a next landing, you see all these crazy shapes on the inside of the building. Makes sense. Oh, Got to go back. This is A.G. Holly Sanatorium in Lantana. If you get off I-95 Lantana Road and head east, there's like a big baseball field and beyond that is A.G. Holly. This is a tuberculosis sanatorium and we talk about relief. There's the uh, American Heart Association uh, emblem. Here's our stepping up, here's our glass block, here's our eyebrows, our uh, you know geometric corners with, the, with glass in there. Now, right now, this is ongoing. There, there are people in this hospital. Now, we have cured tuberculosis, but this is AIDS-related tuberculosis, and unfortunately, uh, there's still people in the United States who have that. But this building was in such disrepair, and the, the city of Lake Lantana just wanted to tear it down. And we had to go and fight for it to save it. So this is owned by the state of Florida. They spent $1.5 million in painting it, and it's gorgeous now, right? It's, it looks beautiful. It looks like a hotel in South Beach or Lake Worth. Uh, but when it was all peeling paint, it was not attractive. But we're really trying to get a hospital, someone to take over this building and make it work, and it can happen. This is like probably the largest building, uh, Art Deco, in the state. Okay, and here we see our Streamline Modern uh, Casino in Lake Worth. Here's an old postcard, right? 1922 G. Sherman Childs, 1948 Edgar S. Wartman. Well, one year ago when they had the charrette where they invited the community to pick what style they want to build this new building in, they announced that W.B. Eckler was the architect in 1922. And Sharon sits here in a big audience like yourself, and I said, Who's that? It's G. G. Sherman Childs. And I was quickly told that I was wrong. Well, for a whole year, I've been looking into this. <laughs> the granddaughter of G. Sherman Childs emailed me three months ago and said, you know, we want to go to the city of Lake Worth. We want to have a, a plaque put up for our grandfather. But they're saying it's W.B. Eckler. I said, you know, I've never gotten, I've never been satisfied. I keep digging and digging and digging. Do you know that just this week, they announced that it was G. Sherman Child. So my book is correct, thank you. And, and now I go and tell the granddaughter, and she, the granddaughter tells me a funny story. She lives in North Carolina, and she works for a, a city there, and W.B. Eckler's grandson is the, the commissioner. And, and he says his, his grandfather is known for building concrete buildings in Lake Worth. So he, he still, he probably was the builder of the building, whereas G. Sherman Charles was the architect. But, you know, it's so funny how politics is, right? Okay, now, this building is in Boynton, 
The Boynton Beach High School, we must save this. This needs to become another armory, another old school square. This needs to become a civic center, you know, something arts, community, culture. Boynton tore down their entire historic downtown, Ocean Avenue. They leveled it four years ago. And of course, nothing is rebuilt because of our economy. So, you know, historic preservation is important. They want to be like Del Rey. Well, Del Rey capitalizes and it preserves and enhances and educates about its historic downtown. And that's what we're doing here today. So when it comes time for voting in Boynton, we want to save the Boynton Beach High School. Because if we don't, you can have a big claw tearing it down, just like we see this Palm Beach Hotel on Brazilian Avenue. And when this made the front page of the newspaper, I went the next day so I could get this picture for you. Because that's what you're going to have, right? Tear down your historic buildings. And there it is. The cops came up to me, who are you? What are you doing here? This, you know, I said, well, they said, isn't this sad? But the good news is, everywhere I go, I keep driving and I discover new buildings. This week, look at this cute little building. Come on, look at the little rounded corner, the eyebrow, the little stepping up, stepping down, charming building. This is in Northwood. Another building. Eyebrows with the vertical bandings. Look how many styles and different ways you could do it. So there's good news because I keep discovering more and more. And thank you so much.